Have you ever bought a perfume in store that smelled absolutely amazing and then you got it home and you were sniffing yourself? You're like, oh no, this stinks. What if I told you that I had some tips today on how to save you some money and never buy a smelly perfume again? First step that you're going to do to never buying a smelly perfume again is to expose yourself to as many perfumes as possible. Now, hear me out on this one. You are gonna make a day out of it. Now, the reason behind this is because you are almost going to train your nose to getting used to several different type of scent profiles. Because what happens is when we first start wearing fragrances, we usually gravitate towards the florals, the fruities, especially for women, because it's familiar. We know what flowers smell like, we know what fruits smell like, it's comfortable, it's familiar. We kind of get pigeonholed into that. Everything else outside of that category really stinks to us. So one way to kind of expand your nose profile, for lack of better words, is to go out there and smell. It's kind of like wine tasting. I know some of you out there love to drink wine. I know I do. When I first started, I drank the sweet wine, the Moscatos, because it was basically grape juice, let's admit it. But over time, my palate started to expand. I went from Moscatos to Rieslings, then I went to Chardonnays, and I started to expand it. Now I'm just barely tiptoeing into the red wines. It's still not my favorite, but at least I've gotten away from just having Moscatos, but that took some time and literally just wine tasting and really improving my palate over the years. So it's the same thing with fragrances is you want to expose yourself to as many different scent profiles as possible. So here's what you're going to do. You're not just going to go out all nearly willy and go to every store and overwhelm yourself and smell a bunch of stuff and, you know, hate life and be choking at the end of the day. No, we're going to go in with a plan. What you're going to do is is make a list of the fragrances that you already like. So if you know that you like a fruity floral, which may be the case, you're gonna stick to that category. You're gonna grab a friend and make a day out of it. You'll go in the morning to say Sephora. You'll go there and you'll only look out for the ones that say on that little end cap fruity floral. Start smelling them and write down ones that you like. You're not gonna buy anything today. You're just gonna smell and you're gonna take a break, go to lunch, go outside, get some fresh air. Then the afternoon go to Ulta, go to Nordstrom, you're going to smell some more. The whole purpose of this is you are going to try to expand your nose, just smell as many perfumes as your nose can handle and write down ones that you like because you're going to come back later and we have a next step. But some tips really quick for smelling is you're not going to smell coffee beans in between each one. I know that a lot of people say, oh, smell some coffee beans. It's actually wrong. I've done some fragrance training in the last year and a half, you all, and what I learned is to clear your nose palette in between is to actually smell yourself. So you're going to smell your arm or just smell something on your body. Smell your hair to kind of cleanse your palate. The coffee beans really doesn't work, but if you smell yourself and then smell another perfume, it gives you a chance to really smell it as it is and not just get overwhelmed. Tip number two is to apply the perfumes that you really are interested. If it smells good on paper, put it on skin because guaranteed it's going to change. Everyone's skin chemistry is different and that can alter how that fragrance is going to smell. So put it on skin. Give it about 10 to 15 minutes, you all, because when you first spray it, you're really going to smell just the top notes and you're not going to get an idea of what the actual fragrance over time is going to smell like. So give it 10 or 15 minutes, walk around the store, smell it again, and that's going to give you a really good idea on whether you really like that perfume or not. While we're talking about notes, I want to go over what that looks like. So when you see a fragrance profile, if you go to Sephora on the site, you click on a fragrance, it'll say top notes, heart notes, base notes. What that is, is the top notes are what you smell at the first go. When you first spray it, that's what you're going to pick up. It's usually something like citruses, some light spices like pink pepper. Those are your top notes. Those are going to fade pretty quickly. So you'll smell them really strong at first, but after about 15 to 30 minutes or so, they're going to dissipate. And what's going to be left is going to be the heart and the base notes. The heart is the heart of the fragrance. It's usually some mixture of some florals, some spices like cinnamon, clove, cardamom. That's kind of the heart of the fragrance. And then the base notes are the ones that really last for hours on end like your sandalwood, vetiver, cedar, some vanilla, some ambers, those can last a long time too. That's your base note. So fragrances are composed almost like a cooking recipe. Like you have your spices, you have your main ingredients, you have your base that you're going to put in there, maybe some vegetables and things. It's all these things combined give you that overall impression of a fragrance. But at the end of all of that, I'm just trying to say is at the end of several hours, what you're going to smell is those base notes. So that's why you always want to let perfume sit on your skin 
for a while because it's going to change over time. You may like it at the beginning and after several hours, you may not like it at all. So give it some time to sit on the skin. Step number two is you are now going to figure out what your favorite fragrance family is. So you can do another trip and smell different profiles. Maybe on your first trip, you just smell your fruity florals. Maybe after that, you're going to expand out and smell some other types. So there's four basic fragrance families. There's more than that, but these are the really, really basic ones. You have your fruity floral, which that's explanatory. You have your fresh, which can be like your citruses, your aquatics, like think Mac Turquatic. That is a fresh one. You have your warm and spicy. Think things like fall scents, like, you know, rich vanillas and ambers and spices and clove and cardamom. Those are your warm and spicy. And then you have your woody and earthy. And these tend to be a little bit more masculine. Think of this as like the red wine category. As we're going around the wheel, there is a fragrance wheel. I'll put it right here so you all can see. As you go around that wheel, it gets kind of drier and less sweet as it goes around. So when you get to woody and earthy, that is like your dry woods. That's cedar, vetiver, oak moss, sandalwood, those kind of woody scents. They can be a little more masculine or unisex, but that's your woody and earthy. So what I like to do is start with the fruity floral. And once I get familiar with that, then I start scooting over one on the wheel and I start going to the fresh. So now I'm just going to smell ones that have citruses, fresh linen. I'm going to get my nose used to that. Then I go into the warm and spices, the vanillas, the ambers, and I try to expose myself to different categories. And what I'm going to do is start figuring out which of those categories do I lean towards. That's going to help me narrow it down. Me personally, I know that I love warm and spicy. I love fall scents. Like I love By the Fireplace by Replica. I love Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille. They're my favorite. I love warm and spicy. So I know if anything is categorized as warm and spicy, there's a higher chance that I'm going to like that. Again, it's all about narrowing down all these choices and getting overwhelmed out there to what category do you like best. One thing that I also like to do is take a perfume that I absolutely love. So if you guys have a signature scent that you absolutely love, go into Sephora or Ulta's website. You're going to click on the left hand side and find out what category it's in. So if I look up, say, Donna Born in Roma, and I see that that is a warm floral, I know that I'm going to try to find others that are categorized as warm floral. So what I can do is click on the filter on the left side of Sephora, click on where it says florals, go to warm florals, and that will help narrow it down and show me other options in that same category. And I can make a list now. Oh, if I like Donna Born in Roma, let me smell these other ones that are in that same category. And that'll help me kind of narrow it down to what my true style really is. Step number three, once you've figured out what family that you like, now you're going to try to figure out what keynotes that you like. So as you start to write down some of the fragrances that you like, maybe there's three or four of them. What I like to do is go to Fragrantica and that's an amazing site, you guys, that has lots of resources on keynotes, you know, new perfume launches. There's a forum on there, reviews. It is a plethora of information on fragrances. If you haven't gone there, check it out. It's my favorite perfume website. So what I do is I go to the top box on Fragrantica's site and I put in my favorite perfume. So I know it's Donna Born in Roma. Let's look that one up. Valentina. It's a very popular one. Everyone loves her. I scroll down. I see that this is an amber floral fragrance. I'm like, okay, this is amber floral. And then I see some of the keynotes in here are black currant, pink pepper, bergamot, jasmine, bourbon, vanilla. So I'm going to open a new tab and go to Fragrantica. Now this time I'm going to go up at the top where it says perfumes. I'm going to scroll down to where it says search by notes. So what I can do, you see the little green boxes where it says female, male, shared. I'm going to click off male because I don't want any male fragrances. I want female or shared, which is unisex. I'm going to put in that green box the notes black currant. Okay, so I type black currant. Now I'm going to add vanilla because we know Donna Born Aroma had vanilla in there. I'm going to add that. And then I'm also going to add jasmine because I knew that that had jasmine in there. So I add those three. I scroll down. I see Donna Born Aroma. And now I find some other fragrances that have those same keynotes in there. So I see Lancome La Vie et Belle. I see Libre by Yves Saint Laurent. I see C Passione by Armani. I have a whole list of fragrances. Look, a Sweet Like Candy by Ariana Grande. There's a bunch of fragrances here that all share some of those key notes in there. Now I can go again and make a list and smell these and say, do I like these? If I do, then I know that I'm probably going to like something that has jasmine. I'm going to like black currant. I love vanilla. It kind of helps it narrow it down even more. Now I know that I like these keynotes because these are in my favorite, my signature perfume, Donna Born Aroma. So the last step of what you're going to do after you figured out your fragrance family, you've expanded your nose palette and you figured out what keynotes you like. Now you are going to get samples before you buy. One of my 
favorite places I like to go to get samples, especially for niche fragrances, is Lucky Scent. And I am not sponsored by them in any way. I just genuinely like this site. So Lucky Scent, if you go to their site at the top, it says that you can get some samples. You can try any samples. You can even narrow it down by what key ingredient that you want. Like I love vanilla fragrances, so I can do a search on there. I can even email their team and say, can you recommend your best samples of vanilla fragrances? They're usually four or five dollars a piece and they're for like multiple wares. I would say like maybe five or six wares. So that way you don't have to invest a lot of money, get a big bottle of them. You can just get little samples and really have time to try them out. And it's another fun process too for you guys to expand your nose by just trying different brands that you've never even heard of before. Cause Lucky Scent has brands that like Sephora, Ulta, Nordstrom don't have. And for me, as I've really expanded my palette, like I literally have hundreds of fragrances now, you guys, it's kind of a sick obsession at this point. A lot of the ones I really love are these niche ones that are not as common because I've expanded my nose palette so much that I like some that are kind of like untraditional, if you could say, because I've just spent so much time smelling different fragrances. But Lucky Scent has so many different kinds that you can try. So it's a great resource. The other thing you all can do is kit decants. And I've had people ask me like, where did you get that travel bottle? You can go to a sites like here, let's do a Google search, you guys. Just type in Google fragrant decants and it'll pull up all these options like scent split is a great one. Decant X I purchased from, I have purchased from Scent Split before. There's a lot of options on here, but basically decants are like a travel size bottle. It's gonna come in a simple atomizer bottle. It'll have a sample size that you could wear for several months, honestly. They're usually like 30 or $40, so they're not super cheap, but it's enough to last you several months. And some people don't even buy a full bottle. They buy these decants because, you know, it allows them to wear it for several months and on a time. And by the time they run out, they're kind of tired it and they want to try a different one. So it's a great way to kind of not break the bank, but still get an amazing quality fragrance for a fraction of the price. Now, my final tip is if for whatever reason you bought a fragrance that you end up not liking over time, of course you can sell it. There's a lot of sites you can sell like Poshmark, Mercury, I think is how you call it, or Merceria. I don't know how to say it, you all, but you can always sell that fragrance, but you can also tweak it to make it work for you and mix fragrances together. Like some examples that I love mixing fragrances like Baccarat Rouge. I've gotten kind of tired of that over time because it's so well known. Everyone wears it, but I still have a really good amount of bottle left. So I always end up mixing that one. Like that with Delina, you guys, if you have Parfums de Marley, Delina, those two together are insanely good, especially Delina exclusive with Baccarat Rouge, chef's kiss. So I always find different ways to layer fragrances together. So if you have a fragrance that you just aren't feeling, maybe try mixing it with another one. Some of you are like, well, how do I know what to mix? Again, go back to Fragrantica and find those keynotes. I like to find fragrances that have at least one shared keynote, whether it be just vanilla that they share, or maybe they both have jasmine. If there's at least one raw material in there that kind of ties the two fragrances together, they can end up layering pretty well. And you never know what kind of surprise combinations that you can do. So if you guys want to see a video on that, on fragrance combinations, let me know in the comments below. I will do that for you in the very new future. So hopefully this gives you some great ideas of how to save yourself some money and never buy a smelly perfume again. Thank you guys for joining me. Come back next week for another Fragrance Friday. I will see you back here. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a great weekend and I will talk to you soon. Bye.